The era of D&D version 5.5 or 2024 D&D is nigh, with new core books revising and buffing the 2014 5e rule set. Now, if you want to get some of those cool updated features but don't want to fork over the cash to Wizards of the Coast for the expensive new books, I've got you covered. In this video series, I'm going to tell you all about the best and most theft-worthy rules and ideas from the new core books so you can drop them into your 5th edition game, or most any other TTRPG, really. Ready to save some money? Let's fly, fools! In this video, we're going to cover our specialized martial classes, and that is the Ranger, Rogue, and Monk. And we're going to start off with the Ranger, a class that got a lot of buffs but lost a lot of its flavor going to try not to rant too much here because I feel like a lot of their fixes miss the mark. Maybe I'll drop in an idea or two of my own for how you can buff up the 5e ranger. We'll see. The first steel worthy rule for rangers is that now hunter's mark is always prepared and can be cast twice per day without spending a spell slot. Honestly, Hunter's Mark has always been a poor band-aid fix for the Rangers' underwhelming damage, and I would replace it with letting Rangers just add their proficiency bonus to damage once per turn. Simple and easy, doesn't require concentration, and scales as they level. Anyway, no one asked me, but that's what I would do. A lot of other features they've added are the optional class features from Tasha's, ones I've been playing with already for a while, Deft Explorer, Roving, and Tireless. Deft Explorer gives you expertise in a skill. Roving at level 6 gives you 10 extra feet of movement, as well as a climb speed and swim speed. And Tireless at level 10 allows you to remove a level of exhaustion with a short rest, as well as 1d8 plus wisdom mod temporary hit points a number of times per day equal to your wisdom modifier. At level 14, rangers can now turn invisible as a bonus action at wisdom modifier times per day, or long rest. These are all fine and good, but the deprecated flavor elements I refer to are Lands, Stride, Primeval Awareness, and Natural Explorer. So rangers no longer have a favored terrain. I think they should have kept this, because it's a part of the ranger's core flavor. I think the class should be able to just swap out favored terrain every long rest to make it more useful. Ranger should be adaptable. Anyway, I don't want to rant too much about the Ranger. In my opinion, their fixes make it kind of better damage-wise, but it's still not fixed. The Ranger needs a solidified identity, like what they did with the Monk. More on that later. Let's move on to the Rogue. The Rogue doesn't have a lot of new abilities in 5.5, but there are still a couple things we can steal. At level 3, Rogues get Steady Aim as a standard feature. As a bonus action, you can give yourself advantage on your next attack roll on the current turn. You can use this bonus action only if you haven't moved during this turn already, and after you use Steady Aim, your speed is 0 until the end of this current turn. It's very handy when having advantage on attacks is pretty much required for the rogue to be effective. But the big new rogue feature is Cunning Strike. Rogues can now trade in damage dice from sneak attack to power various effects. At level 5, rogues normally do 3d6 of sneak attack. So they can opt instead to do 2d6 and spend that other 1d6 of that sneak attack to attempt to poison a target they've hit for one minute. The target gets a con save repeatable each round, or the rogue can spend that 1d6 to trip a target against a deck save, or the third option is to spend 1d6 to take the withdraw option which lets the rogue move up to half their speed with no opportunity attacks. And at level 11 they can use two of these effects at once. At level 14 we get into the really juicy stuff. For the cost of two of those damage d6s you can daze. That means if your target fails a constitution saving throw, they'll only get to move or take an action or bonus action on their next turn. Also for the cost of 3d6, you can use the obscure ability, which means your target will need to make a dexterity saving throw or be blinded until the end of its next turn. And finally, for a whopping cost of 6d6, you can do Knockout, which is basically like the Hold Person spell. They get a con save, and a failure means unconscious for one minute and can retry the save each round. Overall, rogues don't need that much improvement, so these small tweaks are nice additions. Finally, let's talk about the new Monk. Of all the classes, this one has gotten the biggest revamp, and it was much needed. 
I know I'm in the minority here, but I actually liked the 2014 Monk. Was it underpowered? Yes, but it had some of my favorite flavor of all the classes. I've played a few Monks, and the longest running one was from levels 5 to 9. At level 5, I felt like I was the most powerful member of the party. Stunning Strike was an absolutely devastating control power in combat, but by level 8 or 9 it became clear the other party members were surpassing my monk's effectiveness. Especially because Stunning Strike requires a con save and higher CR baddies usually have great con. I was using Stunning Strike less and less because it worked less often, so it became mostly a waste of key points. Well, the new monk gets both a nerf and a buff to Stunning Strike, which we'll talk about in a second. Here's all the stuff you should feel free to steal. First, all monks get proficiency with simple weapons and martial weapons with the light property. This basically takes the good parts of the Kensei monk and folds them into the base class. Also, unarmed strikes can now be used as a bonus action without having to take the attack action. I'm not sure this will come up a whole lot in combat, but I really like it. I like that the monk is the only class that can do this as far as I know. It makes them feel more monk-y and special. Also, with Unarmed Strike, you can punch, grapple, or shove, and you can use your dex modifier for all three. The most expected upgrade was that the martial arts die begins at a d6 and scales up to a d12 at level 17. Honestly, if this was all they had added, I would have declared the monk a decent upgrade. Absolutely steal that for all 2014 monks, but we're not done yet. The monk gets focus points instead of key points, and I think that's a better name. I know they were considering discipline points and spirit points as alternates. So now let's dig into the monk's three main abilities. Flurry of Blows is mostly unchanged at low levels, but Patient Defense and Step of the Wind get big upgrades. Patient Defense now allows the monk to disengage as a bonus action for free with no focus point spend. This is perfect because the monk is always best as a stick and move combatant. But then you can spend 1 FP to also dodge as a bonus action. Step of the Wind also now gives the monk a free bonus action dash every turn, but you can spend 1 FP to disengage, dash, and have your jump distance doubled until the end of the turn. This basically gives the monk the same bonus action options as the rogue except for the hide option. At level 2, the monk gets a feature called Uncanny Metabolism, which lets you regain all your FP once per long rest. This is on par with a new Warlock feature to regain spell slots, and a big boon is a short rest class. No longer do you need to conserve FP during combat or beg the rest of the party for a teensy nap after fighting. But then let's hide. Well, have a nap. At level 3, Deflect Missiles is now Deflect Attacks. You can reduce any bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage by 1d10 plus dex plus monk level. If the damage is reduced to zero, you can spend a focus point to redirect that attack toward a nearby creature and the distance is dependent on if it was a melee or ranged attack up to 60 feet. This is crucial to the monk as a frontline fighter, in my opinion. It makes them much less squishy. Then at level 13, this gets upgraded to deflect energy and it can now work with all damage types. Neither of these help with saving throw damage, but it's better than it used to be. Now let's discuss Stunning Strike. It does get nerfed, but unlike the nerfs to the Paladin's Divine Smite, I'm okay with this nerfing, because it also gets a useful buff. Stunning Strike is now limited to once per turn, and the stun effect only lasts until the beginning of your next turn, not the end of it. But the buff here is that if your target passes their con save, they still have their speed halved, and you get advantage on your next attack against them. This feels fair to me. At low levels, you can't spam it to completely neutralize multiple enemies per turn. And at higher levels against those beefy, thick boy, high constitution monsters, there's still some benefit to it. Definitely worth stealing. At level 10, you get an extra flurry of blows strike, and patient defense grants temp HP equal to two rolls of your martial arts die. And Step of the Wind now allows you to bring along another willing, large, or smaller creature with you as you move with no opportunity attacks for them. Also at level 10, monks can just decide to stop being charmed, frightened, or poisoned at the end of a turn with no action spend. And going without food or drink no longer causes exhaustion. This is like a version of Timeless Body, but it doesn't include the flavor element that made it so you didn't age. I liked that one. 
Also, it looks like Diamond Soul is gone, which gave you proficiency in all saving throws at level 14. That was a very nice feature. Overall, most of these rules are worth stealing to turn the 2014 monk into something actually viable in combat. And there we have this episode's installment of rules you should steal from 5.5 so you don't need to go buy those expensive new core rulebooks. Should you buy the books? If you're looking for all the updated art and spells and backgrounds and species and all the other stuff, then possibly yes. But if you're perfectly happy with good old 2014 5th edition and just want to steal the best new bits, well, that's what I'm here for. And with that, I'm out. Until next time, I'm GM Jim. Now go out there and have some fun.